uh, and I taught in Eastern Canada for a while until I came to New Zealand, and uh, quite a long time ago. Um, I still have my Canadian accent, and I probably talk real fast, too fast, okay? So if things get, uh, so you can't hear me, you can't understand, well, you can hear me, but whether you can understand me, then just tell me to slow down a little bit, you know, to get slow. Um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time in this first couple of lectures, you know, going over the details, like what's the course handout, uh, what's the assessment, what are the tutorials, and things like that. We'll sort of gradually talk about those things, probably more towards the end of Tuesday, uh, just so you can get an idea what the course is like, in case you want to hang around or tell your friends about it. I think you find it a very, very interesting course. Uh, let me just plug in my little internet connection here and see if we can get to our... Uh, <clears throat> our web page. Now I have my own uh, kind of web page going here. Where are we here? Let's try. Is it going to work? Yes. Okay, so I use WebCT or the Blackboard system, but I've kind of developed my own web page and I'm keeping changing it because I'm updating it. And I have some really interesting stuff going on here. Uh, the college supported the project to get the sort of multimedia resources for this course up and onto the web. So uh, you'll find that in various bits and pieces, you can get copies of last year's material. Uh, you can get edited version about maybe four hours worth where I'm kind of organizing these clips into nice little learning sort of modules for you, but it's not complete yet, so it's kind of a work in progress. And so you want to be able to find your way to my website, uh, my, my own website. Go to Econ223. At the moment, you'll come up a page like this. Go down and you'll see a big table which has a bunch of stuff in it, okay? And so, for example, today's handout will pop up there. So everything that I do, uh, I'm not going to give any paper handouts, okay? Uh, uh, everything I do will be available for you on the web. Now, um, let's try, uh, see if we can go to the webcast site. Ah, can't get there. Okay, forget about it. It's probably because I'm not uh, uh, ena enabled from my, um, to get uh, off campus. But we have this other web, two other websites where you can get these uh, copies of last year's videos copies of this year's videos uh, off campus. Now you can also get them on campus and it's cheaper on campus than it is off campus, okay? So I, I just want to let you know that there are these kind of resources available. Students have found it pretty useful in the past, like studying for exams. Some, you know, there's some parts that are easy, some parts that are tough, and you want to get some, uh, you want to go over something again. Well, you can either look at the whole video or you can go to these little lecture clips, which are kind of cool. Maybe I should try to see if I can if I can get my enabler kind of going here maybe we can get off let's give that a try okay so you can see this uh, this is called a webcast project um, we're in the strategic economics collection uh, I think we are and you'll see here a whole list of of uh, resources that are available uh, so this was week one last year, all kinds of things we're going to do. This is week two last year, all kinds of things. And eventually I'm going to fill this whole thing up till we have the whole course, basically set out a nice modular form for you. And that's, you're going to be guinea pigs, you'll be on TV here when we get this thing out. Uh, there's kind of fun stuff from what students have done in the past, and there's other things that, that I developed. But it's very useful because you can go back in and think, oh, I didn't really figure that out what we did in that part of the class. I'm just going to go back and look at that, okay? So, just want to let you know that that stuff's available. Um, what else do we need to know? Uh, just quickly, there's two tests, one at the end of this term and one at the end of the last uh, day of the term. It's Friday, June something or other, okay? There is no final exam in terms of the final exam period. So Friday night, when you're thinking like you want to celebrate <coughs> the end of the term and go and have a beer, what you're really going to do is you're going to come to an exam at 6.30, 8.30, and then it's all over with. Okay. Now, that there's a problem with it being all over with at that time is that you have to organize your time. Okay? That last week of term will be full of stuff for you, but this exam is coming on that uh, Friday, the last week of term. And then there is no mid-year test. So you have your results probably by a week later. Okay? Uh, let's see what else we need to know. We've got uh, assessment. Uh, give you two options. Uh, you can have, it's either one-third, two-thirds, or 80-20 uh, on the midterm and the final. 
and I'll give you the higher grade. Okay? So if you, basically the system is if you don't do too well on the, on the midterm, you can drop it down to 20% um, and get eight, take 80% on the, on the final. So that's not too bad. You can't blow the final, but you can blow the, uh, the midterm. Okay, that's enough administrative stuff uh, the, that I want to do. What I'd like you to, to do today is uh, eat some chocolate bars. You notice I have here many bags of chocolate bars. Well, we're going to play some games today for these chocolate bars and give you an idea of what game theory is, is, uh, is all about. Tomorrow, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about some interesting real life kind of games. And then we're going to develop a little bit of structure for game theory. And the next week, we'll get into the material in the textbook, which is this guy. Now, has anybody actually bought this thing? Someone bought the text? No one's bought the text? We have, what, what do you pay for a new text? About 120 bucks. Anybody get it second hand? There are some second, there should be some second hand ones around because we've been using it now for about three years. So look on Trade Me or whatever and who knows, okay? Uh, the text is important because the course follows the text. It's a little different, but it follows the text by and large. And the exam in particular, I'm not going to ask anything harder than the questions at the end of the chapters. And even some of those questions are kind of hard. But we're not going to have any math that we have to worry about, okay? Uh, there'll be, you can just ignore questions that have a lot of detailed math at the end of the, matter of fact, any math at the end of the, of the chapters. Um, but the textbook is very useful. That's why I don't have any lecture notes. I have the handouts, but the textbook is very readable. Uh, you'll be able to learn stuff from it. You put together the textbook, doing some of the past year's exams, coming to lectures and uh, uh, to the tutorial things we have bef before the exams. You should be able to pass the course quite easily, okay? And you should do well in it, and hopefully you'll find it interesting. Now, uh, just one thing. I, I, I'd like us to have a little project this year. And um, on TV3 tonight at 7.30, there's a 60-minute uh, program on sort of a dispute that's going on between farmers in the high country and the government. And this dispute has to be, is about what's called high country pastoral leases. So there's a lot of privatizing or freeholding of land going on in the high country, land that you thought was maybe public land, but it is not going to be, and it isn't. And uh, it turns out that um, there's quite a history to, this, uh, to these lease lands, and there's a lot of strategy going on, a lot of gaming, but also a lot of strate important strategic ideas, which I want to touch on over the course. So if you've got time tonight and you'd like to watch this TV program, then please do. We are going to tape it, and <clears throat> I'll make it a little streaming video of the thing so it'll be up on the on the streamer that probably or the web uh, uh, server that we have inside the, the university for this kind of stuff but that probably won't be for about another week okay but it's going to be an interesting topic just to kind of go through and I want you guys to kind of engage in it you know go and dig up information about the strategic issues on this high country um, 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 allocation of these high country pastoral leases and the freeholding of high country land so that's just a something for tonight. The first thing we're going to do is I'm going to ask you to do something. Just take five minutes and write down what you think this course is about. Or you want to put a little more easier, what do you think game theory is about? Okay. Now this approach I'm going to take in the class a lot is to try to get you to think for yourself something and then see how your thinking changes. So what I'd like you to do is Literally take a pen and pencil, uh, write down what do you think game theory is all about. And then by the end of tomorrow's class, I'd like you to rethink it, maybe go on to the, to the discussion uh, board and web CT, which I've got up about this. You know, how have your views changed about what game theory is? Okay. So let's just take five minutes. You can talk to your neighbor. Uh, we're not going to do anything high tech here. Just try to think about what you think game theory is all about. Just a little, you know, if you're wondering, what's he going to ask me? Is this going to be in the exam? Is it a test? No. It's just, try and think. What is a game? What's a theory? You know? What is this, what, what's this stuff all about? Just what do you, what do you think games are, a, a, a course in game theory is about or should be about? Okay, so just take five minutes and then uh, we'll discuss some of your answers. The process of choosing the best option on rivals, decisions, slash options. 
Okay, can you sort of expand on that? Like, did you have an example, or were you thinking of something in particular? Um, no, I was just thinking that, you know, you want to you have the best outcome, you know, and you base your decision on other people's choices as well. That affects... Okay, so you got a best outcome, you got a best outcome, you got thinking about other people's choices, and that's going to affect what you want to do. Okay, Jessica, what, can you just sort of read what... You started to write down, I know it isn't quite a coherent sentence, but that's okay, we're just starting off, okay? Um, just wrote down negotiating skills. And outcome against other parties. Okay, so, did, I was asking you about negotiating skills, what were you thinking about with negotiation? Um, as part of a game? Did that seem like an essential part of a game? Um, just sort of, what the other party wants and want, and how to get... Solution? I don't know. Okay, how to get the best solution. Okay, and we got one party, you got another party, how to get, that's what Tom had, but you're thinking about the best solution, but Jessica brought in the idea of negotiating. Okay, that wasn't quite in what, what Tom was doing, and then it's, it's Jane? Yeah. Jane, well, could you read what you've got and what you were thinking? Uh, I think game theory is a strategy about the players uh, they made. Um, perhaps that's not the best choice for the single player, but suitable and uh, profitable for the all player. Okay, so I don't know if you did you guys hear that at all? Probably not. Okay, I didn't think. Okay, I'll try and repeat it. Um, did you hear the other stuff at all? A little bit. Okay, Jane was saying that. Uh, let me see. The uh, strategies the players uh, that are made may not be the best for all the players, or for a single player, but they're suitable for all the players. Okay, so that was a little different than what Tom and what Jessica were saying. So there's players, there's strategies. Um, anything else that like? Doing the best. Anything else that comes up when you think about a game? Pardon? Winning. Okay. Uh, so you got winners and you got losers. Game is something you can win. Did you have like an example in mind or? Every game. A sporting game? Okay. Sports contest? Anybody else? What else? Winners and losers? Uh, what? Making best choices? Depending on what your rival's going to be, negotiating, maybe not best for you, but best for everybody. Anything else you think of? Coordination. So some options you can't have because someone's chosen something else. Like, have you, you got an example you could think of? Okay, so if somebody chooses one, if somebody, some, okay, <laughs> red and blue and green, okay, it's like, you're juggling balls, okay, coordination, okay, it's like red balls, blue balls, green balls, throwing them in the air like that, that could be, I don't know if that's a, that's a game unless you have another player, okay, All right, that's okay, um, but coordination is a really key idea, I don't know what time you guys are going to go home tonight, but five o'clock, jump in your car, drive down Rickon Road, not much fun, right? Matter of fact, getting on a Rick and Road is a pain in the butt, right? You come down Clyde Road and you sit there and you wait and then you get in and you're kind of moving on down and you move on down and you move on down and you move on down. It's like all of these people, just always, just we all want to get home and we're not coordinated very well, aren't we? Because if you go home at three o'clock, it's not a, not a problem. Is that kind of thing? So it's like, you know, what you do is, is kind of, it's discoordinated. So the coordination idea is quite important. Anything else about games? We've got coordination, we've got rivals, we've got winners and losers. Anything else just pops into your head about games? Yeah. Being covert. Okay, like, could you expand? Okay, so, to, okay, yeah. So, the idea of, uh, I don't know, when I think of covert operations, I'm thinking of some kind of, you know, James Bond type thing, something like that. I don't know, maybe, well, but it's kind of being sneaky or under, a little bit underhanded or maybe disguising stuff. You know, that's part of the game, too, you know? And it's always rules in games. Always rules in games. That's right. Yeah, any kind of game like you play ball, any sporting game like volleyball or you know you try and play soccer like you play volleyball. You know, you're out. You know, or if you're playing, if you're a soccer player and you play volleyball, you're out too. Okay, you can't do that. Well, you could, but you would look kind of foolish. You know? um, I mean, you might try. And, what was that guy, the French guy who butted the the head of the last guy in the, in the World Cup thing? It was just. 
you know, the best player in the world is a Danny or something like that, and he walks up to the Italian guy, gives him a headbutt, you know, it's just, that's not in the rules, is it? You know? So their games have rules. Ah, competing for resources. That's a good idea. There's some sort of competition. Okay? So we had a sporting competition, which was the winner-loser idea, but here you might be competing for resources, okay, and that's, there's some sort of strategic interaction. That's what this high country stuff is all about. You, know, you guys want to watch this, this thing tonight, because we're talking the, the major mountain ranges. Anybody, everybody been to Tekapo? Lake Tekapo? You know, you stand, there, you stand there at the township of Tekapo, you're looking up the lake, you see this unbelievable country, right, with the mountains in the background, all tussock, everything, everything you can see is under lease. A lot of it's going freehold. Freehold land along the lake shore of Lake Tekapo, what do you think that's worth? Uh, take Wanaka, Lake Wanaka? Uh, you know, Wanaka uh, is a beautiful town sitting on this lake shore. Have you ever been to Glendu Motor Camp on Glendu Station on the left-hand side of the lake? I mean, if you go to Treble Cohen, go skiing there, it's absolutely stunning. The leaseholders of Glendu Station pay rent of $1,000 a month for 3,000 hectares. Now, what's a hectare? A hectare is like two rugby fields put side to side, you know, roughly speaking. So we're talking 6,000 rugby fields, a lot of which is along the lakefront. Now, you, you tell me what a lakefront property is going to go for, a little quarter acre section on, on Wanaka. Okay? Matter of fact, if you go and rent the little cottage at Glendur now, you can pay $120 a night. Well, their rate of payment for rent was $30 a night for, I don't know how many years, 33 years, and they got the land freehold. Okay. So, uh, yes, big stuff. Competition for resources about land. And there's a big game going on because the stakes are huge. I, I mean, it's stunning. So, uh, this is what you're currently thinking about game theory. We got uh, rivals, uh, we got best actions, uh, thinking about what your rival's gonna, action's going to be. Uh, we got Jessica's idea of communication and negotiating sort of stuff. And then Jane, I think Jane's intuition about what might not be good for one player, but it could be good for all players, it like has to do with cooperation in games. Like, how do you, how do you get cooperation? You know, say, you know, like, we'd like to cancel the rest of the course and everybody get A's, okay? I mean, it'd be good for me, because then I don't have to do any work. It'd be good for you, because you have A's. And, you know, if we could just kind of keep it from the rest of the university, we'd all be really, we could cooperate together, right? But I'm sure that, you know, somebody's going to rat at me and then I'm going to lose my job, or vice versa, someone's going to check up on your transcript, yeah, you never took that, you took that course and found, you know, the one that they, you know, he cancelled all the classes, and, and uh, even though you paid your money, he you cancelled all the classes, but you got A's, okay? So, you could cooperate about something, it could be a bad thing like that, but you could cooperate a good thing, so we're, um, what was your first name? Nicole? Uh, was talking about coordin the coordination idea, really key, so it's sort of key concepts, okay? Well. Okay, over the course of the next couple of uh, days and lectures, we're going to kind of get a better handle of what game theory is about. Um, there's a lot of things it's not about. Okay? And uh, it, it's not just like parlor games, you know, where, where you're playing cards or, or sporting kind of contests. It actually applies to real life a heck of a lot. And tomorrow I'm going to try to talk about some little instances uh, of, of how the strategic interaction applies. And like, I was thinking last night when I drove home, which was 10.30 because I was working on your stuff, um, and I'm a nice guy and I try to do a good job in my, in my preparation, but I also am behind in my preparation, okay? So I'm, I'm driving home at 10.30. I go to the petrol station at Caltex there and I had to fill up my car, but I had to go and pay first before I filled up my car, right? But normally when I go to Caltex, I fill up my car and then I go pay. Now why would they do that? Why at 10.30 at night would they, would they make you pay before you fill up your car? Or in the daytime, they don't do that. What sort of game am I playing with Caltex? I mean, or what's, why would they do that? You got any ideas? Any thoughts? Pardon? People steal fuel. But they can steal fuel in the daytime too, couldn't they? But at nighttime, it's tough. There's only a single guy there. It might even be a single girl sitting there behind the counter. And uh, um, they don't want someone driving off in the middle of the night when no one else is around to change it. So they've got a strategy in place which says, okay, nighttime we do this and at daytime we do that. What about you guys at Varsity? Who's paid their fees? 
Every, well, most people have paid their fees. You guys paid, you've paid your fees? You paid your fees, okay. Got your petrol yet? No, because you have to pay up front. Why couldn't it be the other way around? No? At your course, pay at the end, just like petrol. Well, I mean, those kind of questions are sort of little puzzles, you know? Another puzzle that I was interesting, this, um, this, I'm an economist, and I, but you don't have to have any economics to do this course. It just, these guys sort of threw up this uh, example. They, they were studying in Washington, D.C., the, the behavior of, of um, automobile drivers at, at traffic intersections. And they, and they found this really weird kind of thing that was going on. That the, the, the people in Volvos, these big, expensive Volvos, had more accidents than other people. At these intersections. So why why is this? Volvos are safe cars, you know. And so they 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 thought of a couple of things, you know. Well, Volvo's kind of like an insurance contract, you know. You got this big car, you know, airbags, nice brakes. Um, if you hit somebody, they're going to get creamed, not you. And so you drive a little more risky, you know. You take more chances because you got to you're sort of shielded from the effects of things. And so people, you know, you come up with your kids in the back and they're in their their seat and you press, you come up to the stoplight and. <laughs> You know, and oh, sorry, I just crashed into you. I was just kind of in a hurry. But you're taking, you know, you feel insured in that truck. You know, you're in a little mini. There's no way, you know, you're going to do that because you're going to get smashed. So that's a, that's a strategic be that's a strategic kind of uh, thing that's happening. Whereas you've got this insurance contract that changes your behavior a little bit. There's an idea we're going to think about that. There's another idea about that which was um, uh, well, maybe it's not that it changes your behavior, but they're just certain kinds of people who buy Volvos, you know, and they like to take chances. You know? So that's, we call that a selection kind of problem. And when you go to the, when you go to the bank, it's the same kind of situation that, ha strategic situation the bank faces, you know, it's like, are you going to pay back your loan? What kind of people come in and get loans from me? Okay. So those are two issues we're going to, we're going to sort of, well, think about the, those kind of ideas, but this strategic stuff is everywhere. Now, it's going to seem a little trivial to do what we're going to do now. We're going to have some highly structured games. So we're going to get you to try to think, you're taking up the lines of Tom was sort of thinking about what your players are, the, you, there's another player, and what other players are going to do and what you're going to do. And this game is a simple little game. It's called Stop Go. And, and it works something like this. I have a bunch of chocolate bars here. And I'm going to have two players. I'll, I'll choose a player over there on the left, an A player. A player over here on the right would be a, a, a B player. These guys are going to be red, and these guys are going to be blue. And I even have some color-coded little pieces of paper here for you to use, you know, the pink and the blue. I, I, I'll try not to get it gender-specific on this, you know, so we don't get too bad. But Stop Go works like this. It's, a, uh, it's kind of a game where the first player over here, the A players, they can decide, I'm going to put a chocolate bar here, and they can decide to take that chocolate bar or not. If they take the chocolate bar, the game ends. But supposing they leave the chocolate bar in there and they give the choice back to the blue player, and then, well, then I'll put down two chocolate bars. So the blue player is sitting over here, and the blue player can either say stop or go. If they say stop, they collect the two chocolate bars, the game ends. But if they say go, the decision goes back to the other player over here, A player, three chocolate bars. Let's get another flavor here, Let's get a Twix. Okay. So we're over here the, on the third round, and the, blue, uh, the A players over here, they can decide, well, to take the three chocolate bars or not. And if they, they, they do, if they take the three chocolate bars and say stop, the game ends. But if they say go, then they hand the decision back over here to the, to the blue players, uh, who now have four, four chocolate bars, okay? Four chocolate bars. If they take those four chocolate bars, they can get that by saying stop, or they can say go, get the decision back over to, the, to this players over here. There's five chocolate bars. And you guys don't have a choice now. You get all five chunk bars. Okay. In the fifth round, there is no choice. Okay. So you can sort of see this is a kind of game where two people got to interact. There's a growing pie. Right. At the beginning, it's small, and then if you with the help of the other guy, some cooperation there, uh, it can get larger. With some cooperation, it can get larger. With some cooperation, it can get larger. You can't talk to one another, though. Okay. You can't talk to one another. So that's the game. Got a feel for it? I mean, just, you know, you don't have to memorize the rules, but just let's see how it goes. Um, well, we'll do Tom and Jane, uh, Jessica, because they are good sports before. Okay. Besides, I mean, they look hungry a little bit. Okay. Um, want to do one? Okay. So you guys are red players, and you think about what you're going to do. 
Actually, let me just, before I give these out, I'll just uh, show you the, the slide here that we're going to use. That's, I'm just handing, it, handing them out a, a copy of this thing here. There you go. Can I do it? Need to go over here. There you go. Thanks. Okay, now this, the idea of the question marks is we don't know what these guys are going to do. We don't know what the A players are going to do. We don't know what the B players are going to do. And they don't know what they're going to do yet. <coughs> and neither do you who don't have these little forms. But what I'd like you to do is think about or try to predict what choices they will make in this game. Small chocolate bars at the beginning. Five chocolate bars at the end. There's some interaction between the two players. What are they going to do? And that's the idea of a theory. Or at least part of a theory is to figure out, make a prediction, fill in the boxes. What sort of behavior are we going to observe? Okay, the Volvo comes up to the, <coughs> to the intersection. What are they going to do? The person goes to get a loan at the bank. Are they going to default or not? You know, uh, you go up to the petrol station and uh, you, don't, you, know, you, put your, your, uh, you put your petrol in. Are you going to drive away or not? You pay your money or are you going to drive away or not before you get your petrol? Well, if you do that, okay. Um, you know, this, they, we want to predict what people are, are going to do. If they're, they're coordinating their decisions to go home uh, after on Rickon and Road. There's lots of different uh, interactions we can think about. And here, this is a simple one. We just want to fill in the boxes. Okay. So would you guys, do you want to write something down? I, and I, I would like you to write it down, what you're going to do. Okay, so the, blue, the uh, red players over here, I want you to fill in for the... Um, Let's say, how we, I did four, one, two, three, four, going up, and send me one, two, three, four, so that's be the game you play. I want you to fill in what you're going to do, okay? So you're a red player, are you going to go or are you going to stop? Tom, are you with me there, what you have to do? Yeah. Okay, so you've got, you got to make three kind of choices, and the, the blue players over there, I'm, you've only got two situations, two question marks to fill out, and I want you to figure out what you're going to do, and just, you know, just take a second and think about it. And we'll, we'll play the game for chocolate bars. I'll match you up uh, with one another, and uh, we'll play for chocolate bars. And the rest of you who weren't actually playing, I want you to try and think about how are you going to fill in those, those question marks. Do you have a theory? Do you have a hypothesis? Do you have a guess? Do you have some sort of statements which can help you understand what are these people going to do? Now, I mean, at the beginning of the course, you think, oh, I don't know what's going on here, okay. By the end of the course, you feel a bit better. Oh, there are a few little theories I could use I could use here to help me try to understand this strategic interaction. Beginning, don't worry about it, okay. I mean, just uh, try and use, it might be common sense. Okay. So while I'm chatting away here, I want one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, red and blue. I want you guys to scroll something down, because then we're going to play, I'm going to match you up, and we're going to play the game. Okay? We'll just play for some chocolate bars. I'll give out the chocolate bars. You can eat them, share them with your friends, do whatever you like. Okay? Okay, Tom. Yep. Just, you're, you're going to be, you're the first, in the first game. I just want you to just tell me what you're going to do at those three question mark points. So Tom's asking, what, what do you want me to do, okay? Well, relax, okay? Just take it easy, okay? Um, what I want him to do is figure out what he would do as a, as a red player in this game. Now, uh, there's three red question marks, okay? He can play at three points in the game, depending on whether the game gets or not. I just want him to figure out... Oh, I'm, I'm playing the first... You're the you're the first you're playing the first game. First game in the Don't worry about the second game or third game before. You're the red player in the first game. Right. Okay. Yeah, just you're you are you are going to play you're going to play the first game and so you what's your first name? Andrew. Okay. Uh, Andrew um, yeah, just I mean what are you, what are you going to do? Okay, that's one thing. Just what I want you to No, no, just just for the first just the first game, okay? And um, Nicole, you, you're going to be a, you're going to be a second game player, so it's just think, yeah. yeah. So you just hey, what are you going to do? You know, I mean, for, the one thing you might think about is what do you think the other guy's going to do? Okay, but I, does you still have to figure out what you're going to do? Okay.
Okay, um, Tom, have you written down what you're going to do? And Andrew, have you written down what you're going to do? Now, just if you could just uh, make sure that Andrew tells me, he's written down something, but I'd like you to make sure that he tells me what he, written, he wrote down, you see. Because, um, what was your name at the back there? We're talking about cover it stuff? Pardon? Hayden. Hayden. Hayden actually, there's a... There's a real gem of insight about the cover it sort of thing. Games you can be sneaky in, okay? Like you could you could write down you're going to do something, but you could say something else, you know, because you think, oh no, I would say the wrong thing, or I don't want to be embarrassed, or I want more chocolate bars, or I just want to get out of here, you know, whatever it is. You might change your mind. So the idea of writing down is kind of like a little bit of a commitment. Okay. So um, let's see, uh, Tom. What was your first? What, what was the? What would? What did you do at, at the first round there at eight? You, you're, you said go. Okay, so that's one chunk about here. And what, uh, Andrew, what did you say? Go. You said go. And Andrew, what did you do? <laughs> okay, two chocolate bars for Andrew. Really so if you've got friends, you've got lots of friends here, okay? <laughs> All right, let's, uh, um, let's go. Where were we here? Uh, was Jessica next, wasn't it? Jessica, you were doing, you're a red player. And so did, have you figured out what you're going to do yet? Yeah, you got it there. Okay, that's good. Uh, Nicole, um, uh, Jessica, what was your what was your first one? Go. So we got to go here. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Jessica. Okay, ready? Ooh, not bad, eh? I'm not going to make the Crusaders, but what the heck? Um, where are we? Where's number? Where's number? Oh, Jane. Sorry, Jane. Um, okay. So, who's on the? Who's number three on the other side over there? So, what's your name? Tim, can you speak up, Tim? Because I can't hear you. Fully. Okay, so, Jane, what have you got? Uh, first game is go. First is go. 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 Stop. Oh, okay, three. <laughs> okay, well, I'll pay the chocolate bars. Now, I want you to take notice. I promised to pay the chocolate bars. Okay, and it could be that I wouldn't pay the chocolate bars. Why? <laughs> But one thing economists typically do is, as uh, we pay out on our, um, uh, our little experiments. Now, what's your name? Rachel. Rachel. Okay, Rachel, and what's, uh, who, who's number four over there? What's your name? Who? Sass. Sass. Okay. Uh, what was your first one? Go. Stop. Stop. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, <coughs> we played the game up. Now let's do a little bit of thinking about how we play the game. Okay, now this this is kind of this is the imp sort of important part because this is where the theory comes in. We had a variety of responses. We got uh, uh, we got four for you guys in the, fr the first one, didn't we? And we got a couple of ones. And people do different things in games. Okay, so that's one thing. People are different. Um, that's a really important part of strategic interaction. It, matter of fact, it's probably the most fundamental thing you can take out of the course is recognize the other person you're going to deal with is different than you. Okay? They're going to do different things. And you'll see that over and over again. Because it's really nice that we sort of think, ah, oh, we're all the same. You're just students. I'm just a teacher. Just an average person. I know what you want. You know what I want. We all want the same thing. Why can't we just get on and do it, you know? Well, you could. But life isn't that way. It's a little more difficult. It's, people are different. And they have different... I mean, here we're just dealing with chocolate bars. But the idea, the difference... We see different things happening. Um, now, Tom, you... What was your strategy was... Well, I figured, um... It just what was I really, it? It's I really didn't, didn't want much chocolate. You so didn't want much, you yeah, didn't want much chocolate? I thought he'd go for it a little bit, so then I had to stop. Okay. Uh, did you guys... Nicole, did you hear what Tom said? Up the top here. It was... was no, I know, I was... I, okay. <laughs> you have to give me back your chocolate bar, okay? <laughs> The, um, uh, you, you were talking with Andrew. No, I was just trying to see if Nicole was paying attention. She wasn't, so I'm taking her chocolate bar back, okay? But not after you've eaten it or like that. <laughs> um, Tom said a really interesting thing. I believe he wasn't interested in chocolate bars. Okay? Now, part of the theory here is we're sort of saying we know what Tom wants. And I was thinking Tom wants more chocolate bars than less. Okay? Now, if this was money, would that be a little bit different? Like a dollar? Okay, in previous years I did a dollar, but I haven't got any money right now. But we will have a little bit later on, and I'll be getting it from you. Um, but I, you, will be, you will be getting it back, believe me. Um, so we're going to play for chocolate bars for a while, then later on we'll do this for money. But if it was money, you would, have, you would have been more interested, okay? But now that's an assumption of the theory. It's, uh, we think, oh, if Tom likes more chocolate bars than less, 
Okay, but here you you say, I, I just want to really give him chocolate bars. Okay, okay. Okay, so it, he wanted to win. Now that was uh, your thought about he just you know what is the guy's objective is to win. Well, what's winning in this game? It's getting more chocolate bars and less. Okay, he hates chocolate bars, but he wants to win. And so they sort of think, well, which what is your objective in the game? What is what? And that's another thing in game theory. It's really important to think about what is it the other guy wants. Okay, so let's just suppose we're dealing with people who like chocolate bars. Okay, I mean that want more chocolate bars and less. And let's look at the strategies that way. Your strategy was go go stop. It was just go, one go and a stop. Okay, and Andrew, your strategy, what did you write down? You were a go stop as well. Now, wh what were you thinking, Andrew, what were you thinking about when you wrote down go and stop? What, like, why did you go in the first round? I didn't really like chocolate bars either, but in the sense, in the sense, I'm going to have to use money next time, okay? It's like, what can I do, you know? <laughs> Who are these guys? <laughs> My grandkids would love this stuff, okay? Like <laughs> okay. Well, I was thinking, um, Two or more, if I'm just starting. Option? Yeah. Good. Is it my second choice? Uh, okay, Andrew's, Andrew, yeah, good thinking. Andrew's got a, there's a number of things going on in Andrew's head there that are, that it's hard for you, for you to hear up here, but for me it's, it's, uh, it's, it's close and there's, there's, you, I want you in the course to try to think like that. Take the steps. You know, at first the logic may not be complete. It may not fit all together. You want to think about your own thinking and other people's thinking. But that's part of the course. Is listening to what other people are thinking. Think, Does that make sense? Would I do that? Is that a rational thing to do? Okay. So they, uh, uh, Andrew said go in the first round. Now, Andrew, what were you believing about what the other player would do? You didn't say you didn't know. Did, 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 Okay. Well, why did you? Daniel said he, might, he thought he might stop at three. Why wouldn't he stop at one? Because he wants more chocolate bars, and um, probably wouldn't stop at two. I don't think. Yeah. Okay, I'm, I mean, I'm just pushing. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not criticizing you. I'm just trying to get. Why? Why would you think that he wants that? Uh, he wouldn't stop at round one. He would say go at round one and continue on to later round. And his answer was because he wants more chocolate bars. But the number of chocolate bars Tom can get depends upon what Andrew does, and the number of chocolate bars Andrew can get depends upon what Tom does. Okay? So Andrew's sitting here thinking about what he's doing, and Tom's sitting there thinking about what he's doing. I mean, the two of them alone, because I didn't ask them, really, except I did mention Nicole, why do you think about what the other guy's going to do? Now, that's, that's another part of the, the whole reasoning in, in game theory, is to put yourself in the position of the other player. Okay, try and look at the problems from their standpoint. And it's not because you're a nice ethical creature, it's because strategically, in order to get something out of this game, you have to try and figure out what the other guy's gonna do. Okay? And so, the idea, that when we do these, continue these games, like next, uh, well, we, we, I have another game too, but we'll, we'll start that tomorrow. When we continue these games through the course, part of the thing will be not only deciding what you're going to do, but deciding we are trying to think about what the other player is going to do. Now notice, one's a decision, and you're thinking about what you're thinking about, and the other thing is that you're thinking about what the other guy's going to be doing. Now the other guy's sitting over there, what's he doing? Well, he's thinking about what he's going to do, but he's also thinking about what you're going to do. So if you go back, you can sort of think, well, I'm sitting and Tom's sitting here, I'm thinking about what Andrew's going to be doing, but I'm also thinking about what Andrew's going to be thinking, and Andrew's going to be thinking about what he's doing, but Andrew's going to be thinking about what I'm doing, so I've got to be thinking about what he's thinking about, what I'm thinking about, what he's thinking about, and boom, boom, round in circle, okay? Now, that's, that idea, the circularity of strategic reasoning, everything depends on everything else. That is a key concept, okay? That's part of the problem. It's not like, oh, I can just decide, and life will be you know, good thereafter. It could be, um, but a strategic situation is, Oh, you know, I got to be thinking about what they're thinking about, they're thinking about what I'm thinking about, and I have a really funny little video for you to watch about this, the idea of the simultaneous, simultaneity in thinking. Um, if you've never seen The Princess Bride, then you must buy the video. Uh... All right. Where is the poison? The battle of wits has begun. It ends when you decide and we both drink and find out who is right and who is dead. But it's so simple. 
All I have to do is divine from what I know of you. Are you the sort of man who would put the poison into his own goblet or his enemies? Now, a clever man would put the poison into his own goblet because he would know that only a great fool would reach for what he was given. I'm not a great fool, so I can clearly not choose the wine in front of you. But you must have known I was not a great fool. You would have counted on it, so I can clearly not choose the wine in front of me. You made your decision then? <laughs> not remotely. Because Iocane comes from Australia, as everyone knows. And Australia is entirely peopled with criminals. And criminals are used to having people not trust them, as you are not trusted by me, so I can clearly not choose the wine in front of you. Truly, you have a dizzying intellect. Wait till I get going! Where was I? Australia. Yes, Australia. And you must have suspected I would have known the powder's origin, so I can clearly not choose the wine in front of me. You're just stalling now. You'd like to think that, wouldn't you? You've beaten my giant, which means you're exceptionally strong. So you could have put the poison in your own goblet, trusting on your strength to save you, so I can clearly not choose the wine in front of you. But you've also bested my Spaniard, which means you must have studied. And in studying, you must have learned that man is mortal, so you would have put the poison as far from yourself as possible, so I can clearly not choose the wine in front of me. You're trying to trick me into giving away something. It won't work. It has worked. You've given everything away. I know where the poison is. Then make your choice. I will. And I choose. What in the world can that be? What? Where? I don't see anything. Oh, well, I, I could have sworn I saw something. I thought no matter. <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny? I'll, I'll tell you in a minute. First, let's drink. Me from my class and you from yours. You guessed wrong. You only think I guessed wrong. That's what's so funny. I switched glasses when your back was turned. Ha <laughs> ha, you fool. You fell victim to one of the classic blunders. The most famous is never get involved in a land war in Asia. But only slightly less well known is this. Never go in against the Sicilian when death is on the line. <laughs> Are you? I'm no one to be trifled with. That is all you ever need know. Just think. All that time it was Shawcut that was poisoned. They were both poisoned. I spent the last few years building up an immunity to Iocane powder. You've got to watch the whole movie on Princess Bride. It is, it is it's great. But this that's really interesting. In the very last part of this game, you see, he's sort of, po he's been building up this immunity to it, and that's another, this covert thing that Hayden said is really significant. For a while, we're going to pretend that we know the rules of the game, but a lot of interesting games are, you don't even know what the rules are. You don't even know what game you're playing, okay? So the Sicilian thought he was playing this game, you know, one of the wine glasses is, is poison, but they were both poison, and the other guy was playing a completely different game that he started a long time before. So, uh, just a second, we've got a, about a minute, and I, I don't want to try to do anything anymore. Tomorrow, uh, we're going to come back and play uh, another slightly different version of this stop-go game, four chocolate bars. Uh, if I can get some money out, I might, you know, to make it a little more interesting. Then we're going to play another coordination game, again, just for chocolate bars to give you an idea of what a, uh, a, it's a different type of game, requires a little bit different type of thinking. Then I'm going to look at a few little examples of uh, kind of real-life games that are basically stories almost stories out of my life, stories out of New Zealand life. And what I'm hoping is that th those examples, which you can read in, in Chapter 1 and Chapter 2, they're Dixit and Ski stories, but that by the end of the course, you'll have your kind of own stories about the way in which strategic interaction and these key ideas just fill our whole lives. You know? and, and this really will, this course will change your way of thinking about almost everything that you do in life and any, any personal interaction uh, that you have. Okay, so uh, tomorrow we'll come back, have a few chocolate bars, and uh, we'll see you then. Okay. These handouts will be up in the web. <coughs> excuse me, up in the web after as well.